24 hours have passed, 20 years of past, past learnings and future vision. We're excited you can join us today for Rush, Pochiharu and Pedro Lopes session, transforming your data state, beating the end of support of SQL Server 28 and R2. This 24 hours of fast consists of 24 consecutive live webinars delivered by expert speakers from the past community. The sessions will be recorded and posted online after the event. You'll receive an email letting you know when these become available. My name is Eric Romero, I'm from PassHQ, and I have a few introductory slides before, before I hand over the reins to Pedro and Raj. If you require any technical assistance, please type the question in the question pane located on the right side of your screen, and someone will assist you. This question pane is also where you may ask any questions throughout the presentation. Feel free to enter your questions at any time and Raj will answer those questions. You're also able to zoom in into the presentation content by using the zoom button located on the top of the presentation window. Please note that there will be a short evaluation after the webinar ends, which will pop up after the end your web browser. Your feedback is really important for us, so please take a moment to complete this session. I would like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, Microsoft and Intel. The staging of 24 hours of past wouldn't be possible without their generous support and they are the reason this event is available free of charge. Microsoft SQL Server is a business analytics and data management platform. It's secure, easy to manage, and gives their customers peace of mind and confidence in the security of their data. SQL Server combines scalable performance with end-to-end -end business intelligence and built-in analytic solutions. It can be used on premises, in the cloud, or in hybrid environments. Intel expands the boundaries of, technologies, of technology to make the most amazing experience possible. Information about Intel and the work of its more than 100,000 employees can be found at newsroom.intel.com and intel.com. If you would like to learn more about Microsoft or Intel and sign up for information on how they can help you, please visit the sponsor page in the 24 Hours of Paths website. Keep learning year long. Visit pass.org and check out all of the free educational resources available to PASS members. Connect, share, and learn. And also, don't forget that PASS Summit 2019 will be happening on November 5th in Seattle, Washington. Head over to passsummit.com and register today. This 24 hours of PASS session is presented by Raj and Pedro. Raj has worked with Microsoft for over 14 years and is currently working with the Assured Data Group. As a principal program manager, he's primarily responsible for enabling data migrations to modern on-premises SQL Server, SQL Server, and Azure VM, and Azure SQL database platforms. Pedro is a senior program manager in the database systems group with focus on SQL Server's relational engine and programmability space. He has extensive background in the performance tuning and optimization and also connects closely with several high-profile SQL Server customers and partners in the field to understand more about the product usage and gather feedback that drives improvement back into the product. And without further ado, here's Raj and Pedro with Transforming Your Data State, Beating the End of Support of SQL Server 28 and R2. Pedro and Raj? Thank you, Eric. So we'll start by di diving directly into it. Uh, end of support for 2000, SQL Server 2008 and 2008 R2 is just upon us. It's less than six months away. Now, uh, SQL Server already has one of the longest support life cycles in the industry with 10 years. So this date has been, uh, has been uh, there scheduled, fixed in the calendar for 10 years, almost 10 years now. Uh, we provide five years of mainstream support. And in those first five years, what we do is we provide not only fixes for the product, but also enhancements in functionality. We, we close gaps that may exist in certain behaviors. And obviously, we maintain functionality throughout its, this first five years. Then in the next subsequent five years, we continue to provide what we call extended support, which consists primarily of uh, security updates that may be released for versions that are in this state. Um, for example, SQL Server 2008 has been uh, in extended support for obviously almost five years now, but just last January, when, we, um, when the industry was hit 
with those um, those uh, issues uh, around uh, spectral and meltdown, um, we we had to release security fixes that obviously encompassed our products and SQL Server 2008 and 2008 R2 already at the end of their uh, extended support, they still receive these updates. Now, uh, Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2 will also cease extended support, meaning they will come to the end of their 10 year life cycle, but that only comes in early January, 2020. Now, um, many organizations running workloads on Windows Server 2008 and on SQL Server 2008 uh, and R2, obviously, um, will will want to continue uh, using uh, the, the the current platform that they have, although do it in a way, a way that's safer, that complies with uh, your industry's requirements, for example. And you need to do that um, in a way that allows you to continue to be supported by. The, the manufacturer, in this case, by, by Microsoft. So um, the impact of this end of support means that there will not be any security updates past these dates for these products you see on the screen. That will raise most probably compliance concerns. There are certain industries that are heavily regulated and part of being compliant, which means part of actually being able to do business, relies on the fact that your systems, your platforms remain fully supported by their vendors, in this case, Microsoft. There's also the, the point of by remaining in such old versions, you may be missing a number of innovation uh, opportunities, such as using new features that will make your, your the value for money that you take out of, of, this, uh, of, of your investments in Windows and SQL Server that much better. So when you are able to move to a newer platform where you are able to leverage, for example, in SQL Server, technologies like in-memory OLTP or column store, or in more recent versions, adaptive query processing, those will, uh, out of the box, improve your workloads just, just by moving from those older versions to the newer versions and uh, with little effort and you get, you maximize your investment here. Now, um, it, it's also important to uh, understand that um, we, we do realize that you may have just gotten aware that this date is upon us, especially for SQL Server. And I have some more I want to talk about this in the next few slides. So um, the end of support is upon us, like I said, and let's look at the options that we have to modernize and to move away from that unsupported state that you may uh, be at in a few months. So one is to modernize to on-premises. I'll actually start from the ground up. Maybe you want to uh, leverage the investments you've made on-premises in your data center already. And we still hold your hand in that. So you can upgrade on-premises. You can, for example, upgrade 2008 all the way up to SQL Server 2017 and Windows Server 2016, or you can optionally stay as is in 2008 and purchase something we call the Extended Security Updates. Now, Extended Security Updates, or ESU for short, is something that we are allowing some customers that need more time to modernize to still remain supported by Microsoft. And you, you can either purchase that ESU for three years. And as you see on the screen there, the cost is approximately 75% of the licensing that you have. And that's 75% of the license every year for the next three years that you need to remain supported on those specific SQL 2008 instances. Alternatively, uh, you can move actually uh, these uh, SQL Server 2008 and 2008 R2 to Azure VMs that run SQL 2008 and 2008 R2. And with that, you get these extended security updates for free, as we see up here. So that's another way is to actually modernize and step into Azure from the get-go. Take this opportunity that you need that, that SQL Server 2008 end of support presents to actually start modernizing to Azure. And at the first step, with maybe the minimum 
a, a minimum impact to your to the way that you work today, which is simply moving to IaaS virtual machines where Microsoft handles the underlying uh, high availability, the underlying uh, maintaining the underlying infrastructure that supports your VM, and you are still in full uh, control of what sits inside the VM. So namely the OS and in this case SQL Server. So you can basically move as is um, to that 2008 or 2008 R2. Or if you are actually ready to modernize to a newer version, but you still need, need to maintain SQL Server rather than moving to Azure SQL Database, then you can also do that supported on Azure Virtual Machines, but moving all the way to a newer version of SQL Server. Now, if you want to actually move, lift and shift to a full platform as a service, uh, um, then you can go with, for example, Azure SQL Database Managed Instance. This is a service that we debuted recently. And Azure SQL Database Managed Instance is indeed a instance of SQL Server that's fully managed, which means that it's not a singleton database service but rather it's a, a platform that's compatible with versions as far back as SQL 2008, because we do keep the notion of database compatibility levels and the earliest we support is SQL 2008, which means that you can lift and shift your SQL Server 2008 all the way up to managed instance while keeping the same database compat level. Obviously, that's available also in SQL Server 2017, but it's especially useful to by maintaining um, your control over functionality when you move to a full pass service. Now, being a pass service, that means that we take care of managing um, everything that sits below the level of your database instance, which means that you can dedicate more of your time to actually managing your data, productizing and monetizing your data rather than uh, more more menial tasks that uh, you may have to do when you when you run your own data center. Now approaches to modernization, you have a number of them, um, and you can upgrade, and that's the first one you see on the screen here. And upgrade means you can upgrade your existing applications using your existing investments in your data center. That is maybe the, the one that has list. Uh, friction, especially if you have very recent uh, investments in your own data center. So we fully support you there. You can modernize to, to uh, SQL Server, to modern SQL Server, leverage features and leverage um, uh, new levels of performance and availability that come with these new versions. But you can also take this opportunity to rehost, to lift and shift. Like I mentioned, move, for example, for VMs irrespective of the version that you are that you are looking at. So you can actually take those applications as, as is and start benefiting from some aspects of the cloud without the risks of actually making any code changes because you are hosting after all in a VM that sits in Azure. Now, one step ahead of that is the, the refactor. Now, when you refactor means that you take advantage of the infrastructure as a service together with platform as a service. So you can actually have little to no code changes and start leveraging um, these, the, the refactoring your application to work uh, with parts in uh, a VM. For example, uh, your application layer resides in a VM and your database already resides in Azure SQL Database Managed Instance, for example, which is a fully passed service. Now, you may actually want to completely re-architect the entire application, which means that then you'll start to also think of software as a service. And in this case, modernize the application layer itself to move completely into a PaaS service, which is resilient, which can scale, which can be independently deployable, and it's fully born in the cloud. And obviously, you can go all the way to the other extreme. So we move from the upgrading and, and, and leveraging your investments in your own on-premises data centers to completely rebuilding the application from scratch and born in the cloud and making sure that it's highly scalable, globally available. So all these options are available to your, uh, to your journey. 
at any point you wish to start. And Microsoft is with you along the way. Now, um, the migration journey, like I mentioned, starts on premises. It can go all the way to Azure. So with this, we provide a number of tools uh, that, that will allow you to gain more insight every step of the way. Um, we, we allow you to, to, and we work with you to assess your current state. And that will involve all the stakeholders. We will help you calculate your, the TCO for, for the, the current and the, the uh, future state that you'll be in. We'll help you to discover and evaluate your current applications and the data platform itself to then do actually the migration itself and to select one of several migration strategies that fit your requirements for downtime, for example. And then we have tools and processes to help you apply that migration strategy. And we have tools and obviously a partner ecosystem to help you do this. Then it's the optimized part. Now, if you are looking to modernize the application, you also want to optimize your costs optimize your return of investment and optimize your cost of ownership. So it's important to uh, understand where you can optimize your system to be able to take some of the, the, the cost that you had that was unnecessary and reinvest that back into your business and to further optimize this journey, which then on the other end needs uh, a very secure and completely manageable uh, infrastructure and a completely manageable ecosystem because we'll be able to leverage uh, when you go all the way up to the newer versions of SQL Server and Azure SQL Database, the highest levels of protection, um, both for your data, but also security uh, overall of your platform, and obviously uh, real-time monitoring that allows you to have insight as to what's going on in your system, but also to provide intelligence that allows you to, uh, to, to, to uh, leverage adaptability to make sure that your system can uh, actually uh, correct itself and that it can be adaptive to ongoing conditions that run through your, your data uh, usages. Now, um, then over to Raj, because he's going to talk about how we can actually take these on-premises ecosystems and put you all the way into a more modern SQL Server, which includes obviously Azure SQL Database and SQL Server. Take it away, Raj. Thank you so much, uh, Pedro. Um, hello, everyone. Um, Pedro talked about the various phases in the migration journey. He talked about assessment, migrate, optimize, and secure and manage phases. Um, so what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to uh, introduce you some of the tools and uh, services that our team built that help you to navigate through this migration journey. And within that migration journey, the main focus is assess and as well as the migrate phases. Before I introduce you the tools and services, um, I want to talk about uh, the specific source and target page that we support uh, migrating um, using these tools and services that we built. So on the left side, you see that these are the various sources that we support uh, migrating to various uh, targets on the Azure um, on the right side that you are seeing here. So when it comes to the source and target pairs, the sources is we support migrating all the way from SQL Server 2005, uh, 2017 uh, to Azure SQL Database Singleton, Azure SQL Database uh, Elastic Pools, um, Azure SQL uh, Database Manager Instance, and as well as the SQL servers which are running on the Azure VMs. And when it comes to heterogeneous platforms um, like Oracle, Sybase, DB2, we support migrating those sources to the respective uh, Azure targets as well. In the case of open sources, we support migrating from MySQL and as well as the PostgreSQL to Azure database for MySQL and Azure database for PostgreSQL so that you can perform a lift and shift migration over there. And uh, when it comes to the NoSQL databases, we support migrating from MongoDB to Cosmos DB. And, and not only that, we support uh, migrating from on-premises environment, we also help you to uh, migrate from the other cloud vendors like AWS, uh, you know, a SQL servers which are running on the AWS RDS. You can migrate to the 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 four um, SQL database targets that I mentioned on the Azure. Same thing, whether uh, you know if if it is running on a Google Cloud, you can migrate those SQL servers and other databases to Azure as well. So those are the broad spectrum of sources and targets that we support today. 
and the support for more source and target pairs are going to come in our feature releases as well. Now, given that we understand the source and target pairs, let's examine the specific tools and services that our team built to navigate uh, you through the migration journey. And uh, uh, if you think uh, the assessment as the first phase, where there are three different tools that uh, we built that really help you through the assessment phase, SQL Server Migration Assistant tool uh, primarily help you to assess your on-premises Oracle, Sybase, DB2, heterogeneous uh, sources and then identify the schema conversions and provide recommendations to convert the schema uh, to support and compatible with the target Azure that you choose. And uh, not only that, it's going to provide recommendations how to convert that schema. At times, it also auto uh, convert or auto transform your schema that is supported on the Azure targets as well. And when it comes to the SQL Server sources, the tool called Data Migration Assistant tool, this tool uh, help you to assess your on-premises SQL Server environment and it finds out it also recommends you the optimal Azure target that you can choose that best fits your um, on-premises um, workload uh, with minimal migration effort that you can migrate to. It also tells you the specific size that you would want to start with uh, after migrating to the Azure, the, the specific SKU that you would want to use it and it also provides you the specific set of objects in your schema um, you know that are going to if, if there are any specific objects that are going to break uh, Migrating to Azure it provides not only it identifies those objects, but also provides the comprehensive recommendations how to fix those objects After the migration is done and there is another tool called database experimentation assistant tool This tool really helps you to validate your uh, your performance on the target um, So that you can get a confidence on how your target is going to respond to your business applications after the migration is done. So basically, this tool is going to collect the the performance data uh, of your uh, you know source workload and then try to replay that workload on the target and then provides a comparative analysis on how the workload is really performed on the source versus target, so that you will really get a good understanding on how your target is going to respond to your applications after the migration is done. So these are the three different tools that uh, that you can use to. Uh, go through the assessment phase and after the assessment is done the next phase is to do the actual schema and database migrations now that is where uh, you will be using our service called azure database migration service also called azure dms uh, that you can use to really perform both uh, offline and as well as the online migrations so azure database migration service is a fully managed service on the azure um, we first released for general availability uh, 2018 May um, since then uh, we were able to migrate more than you know 50,000 databases using the service so far um, and then this uh, service uh, has built-in resiliency uh, uh, built into the system where if there are any we know that you know the migration uh, prone to any of the intermittent network failures and when those failures happens the Azure database migration service fully understands that and then when the network is restored it will uh, restore the migration from where the failure happened. Um, it also uh, supports both offline and as well as online migrations. The online migrations are specifically designed to minimize your downtime during the migration um, time so that to provide a near zero downtime migration experience for you. So um, as we understand the tools and services that we uh, we support to help you to navigate through this migration journey, um, let's examine you know, a couple of these models uh, that uh, Pedro talked about. Pedro talked about the various uh, approaches and strategies that the customers are, uh, you know, adapting to migrate to the cloud. Um, and then specifically examine the uh, the lift and shift, which is rehost scenario here. In the rehost scenario, your applications are uh, hosted on prem data center, and these applications are hosted on Windows 2000 uh, Server 2008 R2, and your database is running on a SQL Server 2008 R2. And now uh, you want to migrate these um, apps and as well as the database layer to the uh, to Azure at that point You can use our Azure site recovery service, which is also a fully managed service on the Azure which really helps you to migrate the the uh, the, uh, the Windows uh, Servers that are hosting your uh, web and app layers uh, to Azure um, uh, SQL Azure VMs actually and at the same time you can also use the Azure site recovery to migrate your uh, servers which are hosting the SQL Server 2008 R2 
you can migrate as as it is uh, to Azure uh, SQL servers which are running on the Azure VMs using the Azure site recovery. Um, so Pedro, do you have any uh, further comments on this approach actually? Okay, um, so looks like Pedro gone offline a little bit. Um, oh, I'm sorry, so I was muted. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, but what I meant, to, what I was trying to say uh, unsuccessfully is that at the end, we do have one session recommendation, which quite complements this one in the sense that we actually tackle the migration process itself and specifically how do these tools fit into the migration process that you will need to run or at least that we recommend you to run so this is a good segue for that sounds good thank you pedro so let's now examine the uh, the other model that we have our, our strategy that the customers are really adapting migrating to uh, cloud um, as you see here the the uh, the on-premises workload which is running on web and application layers on running on the uh, on the windows server 2008 r2 and the database layer is running on SQL Server 2008 R2. Now, what you can do is uh, you can use the Azure Site uh, uh, Recovery Service to uh, to migrate the the application layers as it is uh, to application layers which are running on the Azure VMs. And at the same time, uh, in case if you decide that you want to migrate your database to platform as a service, where you want to migrate to Azure's um, SQL Database Manager instance, then that is the time that you could use Azure Database Migration Service to perform an online migration with near zero downtime migration. So these are the two different approaches that you can adapt. Um, and then specifically, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a demo um, that really uh, navigate you through uh, to the cloud journey using this, this specific approach that you can choose. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is um, here I'm going to showcase some of the uh, uh, the DMA assessment uh, um, assessment results that that you could really leverage um, to assess your on-premises environment to see what it really takes to migrate these uh, databases to uh, the platform as a service. So this assessment is particularly performed uh, against the SQL uh, against the databases which are running on the SQL Server 2008, as you see here. And then with an intent that you want to migrate them to Azure SQL database singleton databases and uh, the um, For the sake of the time. I'm just showing the results here I already performed the assessment and as you see here there are a couple of options provided here One is the SQL server feature parity and the compatibility uh, assessment in the case of SQL server feature parity We look at all the surface level features at the SQL server instance level and then identify some of those features that are not supported on the target environment that you have chosen here. For example, in this case, uh, there are at least seven features that are currently in use uh, in your on-premises workload that are not supported migrating to Azure SQL database uh, in this case. As you see here, cross database reference queries are not supported on the Azure SQL database. Um, and then SQL Server agent jobs are not supported. Uh, instead of that, you know, the recommendation is, uh, is used to Azure Elastic jobs. And depending on how many number of jobs you could uh, you could decide whether you want to switch those jobs to elastic jobs or if there are too many jobs that it's too much effort then maybe that is something that uh, might not be feasible for you um, so we strongly recommend you to look at all the unsupported features and there are some features that are partially supported which means that they're supported but uh, the functionality could be a little different migrating to azure sql database um, so this is the assessment really gives you the feature parity uh, results for you um, that really helps you to uh, de determine whether you want to migrate to Azure SQL database or Azure SQL database managed instance where the Azure SQL database managed instance um, provides 100% or close to 100% compatibility with your on-premises instance model where all these features are fully supported on the on the Azure SQL database managed instance. And in the next screen, uh, as you see here, I want to share the compatibility issues assessment here. Um, as you see here, there are a couple of databases that I assessed which are running on the SQL 2008. Um, and then there are multiple categories here. The very first category that uh, I want you to look at is the migration blockers. Um, so some of these objects that are reported in this category, they might break um, migrating to Azure SQL database. So if you don't fix these objects, um, the business functionality, which is kind of leveraging some of the objects that are listed here. In this case, it is a employee office. Yes, it is a employee office. Will break. 
Uh, so you want to make sure that uh, so uh, you, you want provide to make a fix sure for this that uh, supports the uh, on-premise uh, on uh, AI with the, with the target uh, of the SQL database after the migration is done. Not only that we identify the issue here, we point to the specific object that has the issue. We also provide you the line number and column number so that you can very easily locate the area that you need to fix it. And we also provide you the comprehensive recommendation as well. That really helps you how to fix those objects. As well. that really helps so you break uh, the migration well. blockers are definitely so your uh, the highest priority that you need to look for and there is a behavioral change as well and there where is a behavioral change the, as well the specific objects that are that, that are reported on this issue that are, that they might continue to work issues, uh, uh, they might continue from to the work, functional uh, standpoint uh, of view but you might see some kind of a behavioral view, but you experiences. might see for example in the case of unqualified joints in the case uh, the of queries might still work joints, but you uh, might really experience uh, some sort of performance degradation because of the changes that we made to the query optimization so those are the things that we would want to look at as an next priority and we deprecate the features are the deprecated uh, sorry, features we, are these features are uh, we, on, these issues these are only provided are, for uh, on, information are only provided uh, for point, information and these issues are not really point, a migration block these issues are not really uh, a migration just that, for you know, some uh, of these features that, might be removed you know, in the feature versions of the SQL Server, the but it will not really impact your migration. But it will not really impact. We only recommend you to start using some of these uh, some of these features in the new development uh, that you might have. So that is kind of an analysis that uh, you so can really leverage the DMA tool to really assess your on-premises environment and find out what it really takes to migrate to specific environments to platform as a service. So now, once the assessment is done, the so next now, step is to migrate your schema, migrate your data, migrate your data, migrate your objects like you know, SQL Server agent jobs, logins like, you know, that you would want to migrate, jobs, so that you can have a comprehensive so that you can have entire SQL Server migration experience. Um, so before I showcase um, the migration so I showcase using our Azure database migration service, using our I want to spend some time to talk about and provide you the architecture of the Azure database migration service. Um, so this, uh, this slide looks very busy, but um, I'm so going to go uh, slow on this bit. Go, uh, uh, as you see here on the very right side, you have your on the very right side, you have your you know it could be SQL Server or it could be you know heterogeneous sources as well. And you want to migrate these databases to the cloud. And now you also have a site-to-site connectivity between your on network and as well as the Azure network. And this can be done in three different ways. Either you can have an express route connectivity, or you have a site-to-site VPN. You have a uh, site connection, to site, uh, or you can, can have a point to site connectivity. Or you can well. have a so, point to site uh, connectivity. We would want you to establish so, your uh, we would site to site connectivity using, using any of these three, three approaches that are listed here. And then the very first step is that you would want to create a Azure database migration service on the Azure portal before you start your migration. And when you create that service, that service is created in your own subscription. And then there are three different ways that you can really interact with that service. You can interact with Azure portal. Portal. You can and if you want to really portal. automate those migrations, you, to really um, you can use our PowerShell command lets um, that are provided to completely automate those migrations as well. Or if you really want to integrate these migrations into some of the tools that you have already built, then you can use the CLI components to do that kind of integration as well. So these are the three different ways that you can really interact with the Azure database migration service. And each time that you send an action or a request to uh, the DMS to, service um, that request will go to the DMS Azure Resource Manager at first, the and then when you when you really create the DMS service in your own subscription, the actual DMS core engine will be deployed into a virtual machine, which is provisioned in the Microsoft subscription. But the way that the VM can interact with your cloud environment and as well as with your on-premises environment is by means of the VNet injection. So we take the VNet that we provide to the DMS service. To the you provide experience, to the and then we inject that VNet into the virtual machine. That way, the virtual machine will be uh, able to access your uh, cloud subscription and as well as your uh, your and as well as your your. And then we also have a custom resource provider. So all the requests that are coming through uh, the resource manager will route the resource through the DMS resource provider, and then those requests will be going to the service bus queue, and then we use the Azure storage account to store only the metadata about the 
service store only but the we data, don't store any data service, from, we don't from your environment data all your from, data is going to be your sitting in all your data you know, is going to be sitting in your own subscription or you know, on premises your own environment so we don't really access your data so we don't we really uh, access your data the metadata that is required about your migration the metadata that is required about your migration that is will be stored in the azure storage account and that is will be stored in the azure storage account so that's how the entire service is architected so that's how the entire service is architected so we are going to be using this service to do the to the online migration from your sql server environment to from your sql server environment to Azure SQL Database Manager instance. And before I go to the demo, I want and to explain how to the online demo, migration I want works to with the DMS. Um, so you have your on-premises environment um, here, so you have your and then you want to migrate here, these databases and then you to, want to migrate um, Azure SQL database database Manager instance, um, which is sitting in your own cloud subscription. Which is sitting in your, um, and, your then subscription. You um, a, and then a, you also have a site-to-site connectivity between your on-premises environment and the cloud network. And then you already created a DMS instance in the in the in the in your subscription. One thing that we we use is when we when it comes to the online migrations, DMS uses the existing backups. That means we leverage your full database backup and as well as the transactional backups to to do the migration. And DMS will not perform any backups. Instead, we will use the backups that we might already have as part of your recovery plan, and we just leverage those backups. And so we just leverage those you backups. provide those backups to so us in the assembly network. You provide those backups to us in the assembly network. The soon that we see those backups are available, the DMS will upload those backup files to the Azure Blob Storage. And this is Azure Blob Storage is something that you provide in your own subscription. And then these backup files will be uploaded to the Blob Storage. And then at first we will be restoring the full database backup. And then we start looking for the subsequent log backups as the log backups are available. We keep uploading them and then we keep restoring them onto the manager instance. Managers. This process continuously and, uh, happens this, this process until you say that you are ready to do the cutover. Until you say when that you are ready to do the cutover, cutover at that you point you start the all the incoming the traffic to the, uh, the on-premises SQL the, uh, environment to the and then you SQL take the final log backup and then you call that as a key log backup we call and then that provide that log backup into and then provide that log backup into your uh, then network share. Then we upload that backup um, and, and then we will restore the backup and then we will restore the final backup to the to the final backup to the manager uh, instance the, uh, and then we we'll bring the instance. target database and then online. The target so that's how the online migration works. So that's how the online migration works. So if you look at the entire process, so if you look at the entire process, you will not be having any downtime. You will not be having any downtime until you are ready to do the cutover. So during the whole time, we look for your backups and we upload and we restore them. And, and we restore the, them. Uh, and, and the business for the, your applications is as usual. Your they keep on connecting to your usual. source environment they and do all those transactions. It will not impact this. your 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 on-premises business. But when you are ready to do the cutover, that's the time that you take the log backup and then upload and then restore. That is the only time that you have the downtime. So that can be uh, you know reduced to as much as of six, 15 minutes um, time frame. Usually on an average, uh, you can achieve uh, the the migration to Azure SQL Database Manager instance. So having said that, now I'm going to switch my uh, uh, context to showcase the demo here. Um, and then for showing the demo, here is the context. I have my SQL Server 2008 R2 uh, instance running. And then you see that uh, there are a bunch of databases here. I particularly select my HR database um, to um, to migrate this uh, from on-premises SQL Server 2008 uh, R2 to the uh, the managed instance that I that I, that I already provisioned here. So that is kind of a context here. For that, there are three different steps uh, as we talked about. The very first step is that you need to create a DMS instance, and then you start the migration project. Um, and then at the end, the third step, you would do the migration cutover when you're ready to do the cutover. So at first, let me go to uh, the create experience here. Um, like I said, the Azure Database Migration Service is fully managed service on the Azure. So you create a resource here. Um, you use the create resource command on the Azure portal and then look for the migration service. And you find Azure Database Migration Service here. And then you hit a create button. Here in this uh, blade, it's very simple actually. You provide a few uh, steps here, like you create a name, uh, you give a name to it, and then you pick a subscription where you want to create your uh, uh, DMS service. And then you can choose existing resource group or create a new resource group where we keep all the uh, cloud resources that we need for the service. And then you choose a specific region where you want to create the service. We typically recommend to create the service in the same region as the target management instance for the optimal uh, 
um, optimal migration experience. So the next step is virtual network. You need to choose a virtual network, and this is the most important step in the creation of the DMS service. This is the virtual network which will provide the DMS, the connectivity to both source and the targets. And if you choose a wrong uh, VNet here, then you will run into the migration issues where you will not be able to connect to source and targets. Um, we try to provide you as much information as needed uh, to help you to pick the right uh, uh, um, virtual network. But also we provided a documentation here which describes the various network topologies that we commonly saw uh, in our customer environments, how they configure their DMS, DMS instance. System. And there are four different uh, 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 network topologies are described here. Uh, I'm going to talk about one scenario here where you have your on-premises um, SQL servers and then you also have an express route connected between, between your on-premises network and uh, Azure. And then um, that, uh, so when you create a DMS instance, uh, you use the VNet and then the the same vnet that is being used for the managed instance as well but but instead of putting them into the same subnet as of mi you created a separate subnet for dms because you cannot create any other resources in the subnet used for mi so you have to create a separate subnet for dms in the same vnet and then you create that one um, that way the dms can be able to uh, talk to managed instances here and then the same VNet is attached to the Express Gateway. That way it can able to contact the on-premises environment, uh, environment here as well. So that, that's how the simple configuration can happen. Um, so essentially the same VNet that is being used for both MI and as well as the DMS, but the DMS is created in a separate subnet. That is the topology that you could use. Um, another topology that you could use is uh, if the SQL server already running on the uh, uh, SQL VM, now you want to migrate to managed instance. Uh, where everything is in the same uh, vnet again um, but uh, mi is on a separate subnet but both dms and uh, source sql vm are still sharing the same subnet within that vnet that way dms can be able to contact source and targets um, right um, but in the case where mi is on a separate vnet you can still be able to uh, establish the connectivity by creating a vnet peering between the vnet used for mi and vnet used for uh, dms so these are the uh, various topologies that you could use and you pick the topology that best works for you we also provided all the uh, network ports that you need to use um, uh, to enable the um, uh, um, the network rules and everything firewall ports that you need to open all that information is provided in this document so i strongly recommend you to review this document in our doc site before you can start creating the dms instance so I pick my uh, VNet here, and then the next step is I'm going to select the size of the uh, DMS that I want to create. There are two different SKUs provided, standard and premium tiers. Standard is always free. You don't have to pay for it. It comes up with uh, three different SKUs, uh, but it only supports offline migration. That means your migration downtime starts from the time that you start your migration. Uh, but whereas in the premium, which supports the uh, online migrations, which only comes with four V cores today, um, this 4V course is provided free for uh, next six months since the time that you start you create your DMS service But if your migration goes beyond six months, then that's the time that we are going to be to start charging you But for first for six months the 4V core premium is free and if you are doing online migration You will be using that so I'm going to choose that one because I'm going to be doing the online migration And then you hit a create button so it would take around uh, you know uh, 10 to 12 minutes um, so for the sake of the time I'm not going to create, but I'm going to uh, use the existing one here. <clears throat> and then, um, so I already created a demo DMS online West US to um, uh, DMS service. We are going to use this DMS service to do the migration. The next uh, stage is that you're going to create the migration project here. So I'm going to click on new migration project where you provide your source and target information. Um, and then we'll give you, um, name to it and then my source is sql server like i said we support several other sources as well and then my target is managed instance sql database managed instance and then this time i'm going to be performing an online migration so i'm going to choose that option here and then i'm just going to save and create the project uh, to the next step so here i'm going to provide my source sql server information in the in this in the source uh, blade I provide a fully qualified domain name here. We support both the Windows and the SQL authentication. I'm going to use Windows authentication here. I 
and then I'm going to connect to the source. At this point, uh, DMS is trying to connect to the source and make sure that the user provided has the right permissions to perform the migration. All those validations are going to happen there. And in the next screen, I'm going to provide an application ID which we are going to use to connect all these specific uh, cloud resources that um, that we need for this migration. Um, so if you don't know how to create an app ID, we provided an uh, in-depth documentation over there, step-by-step -step guidance that really helps you to uh, create an app ID and as well as the key. We use this app ID and key to connect to target manager instance uh, and as well as the Azure Blob storage where we need to upload the files. Now I'm going to choose my um, um, manager instance here. I also provide a SQL ID and uh, and authentication uh, for the for the target manager instance. And I'm going in the next screen, I'm going to choose the specific databases that I want to migrate. Um, you can perform the entire SQL Server as a whole so that you can do a lift and shift migration to MI or you can pick a specific databases. In this example, I'm going to pick my HR database. And then now you provide a few migration settings here. The very first thing is you provide a network share, a SMB network share that has the backup files that we can use. And you also provide a Windows account that DMS can impersonate to read the files from that network share. And then you pick a subscription where you want us to use the, um, the uh, blob storage that we can upload those files. And then this is the blob storage that we could use. And then in the advanced settings, you can rename your database as well on the target in case if you want to do it. So I'm going to uh, rename it to pass demo. You save it. So basically what you did here is you provided SMB network share. You provided a Windows account that the DMS can use to read the backup files from this location and then upload to the, the storage account that you have chosen and then restore the database as HRP pass demo onto the managed instance that you selected. So that's that's how it works. So now again, it's making all the validations to make sure that the SMB network share is valid. Uh, the user has the right permissions and all those validations are happens. While that is happening, now I got the summary here. Just give a name to it. Run migration now, and you just you just hit run migration, and then now your migration is going to start. So. As you see here, I already took a couple of backups here or maybe three backups uh, for the HR database as part of my disaster recovery. I got HR full backup and I also have a couple of log backups, log backup one and log backup two that I provided in this network share as you see here. Now the DMS would know those backup files. I'm going to refresh this and then I'm going to click on HR database here to find out what's the status of those backup files. It already uploaded those backup files and pretty soon it is also going to start restoring those backup files as well. Um, so I'm going to refresh this again. Now it is restoring. Uh, there are uh, full backup is restored. One log backup is done. Second backup is done. Is is restoring right now. And your downtime is not started yet at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to go back to my source and then I'm going to insert some values into um, into my department table here. So here is my source. I'm inserting a new record into uh, the source. Pass conference in Seattle. And then I'm going to take my final backup here, right? Which is backup three, um, right? That is done. And then now I'm going to go back to my uh, here the DMS. The final backup is also the third backup is now uploaded. And at some point of time, it is going to get restored as well. Once that is restored, you can start doing the cutover. So here. In the cutover, make sure that there are no pending log backups uh, left because right now it shows as one because the third backup that I just took, uh, the third log backup that I just took is not restored yet. That's the reason it is showing as one. And you want to make sure that this value shows zero before you confirm and then do the uh, cutover. So it's going to uh, take some time. Obviously, for the sake of the time, what I'm going to do is I pretend that the third backup is also restored. And then I'm just going to confirm and then, and then I'm going to apply. At this point, the cutover is in progress. So it's going to make sure that um, it's going to bring the target database online at that point. So you can go back here and then see if the target backup is online already. So now it is in recovery. So it is in the process of bringing this database um, 
online as part of your cutover experience so uh, it might take a little in a few seconds here and there but um, that's how the online migrations really work um, so hope you are going to be using uh, in your upcoming migration uh, uh, projects to use the to leverage the DMS service to do the migrations now I just want to uh, you know share some of the um, um, source and target pages that we have and some of the source and target pages are in preview uh, that I want to list out these ones so as you see here this is the plan for uh, h1 um, financial year uh, 2019 and these are the some of the uh, scenarios that are going to be enabled in h2 uh, time period as well as you see here when you see a three uh, tick marks here that means uh, either they are generally available in h1 or they are going to be generally available in h2 when you see uh, uh, two tick marks here that means they are either already in public preview or will be enabled for public preview in h2 um, or in the private preview the, the one single tick mark that you might see are private preview where especially an example is um, oracle to um, sql M, uh, sql db mi and as well as oracle to sql db uh, these scenarios are currently in private preview um, so if you any of you are interested please let us know so that we can enroll to into the private preview but rest of the other um, source and target pages will public generally available all of them by h2 time frame now i'm going to pass it to pedro to talk about some of the programs that we have that really help you to do these uh, these migration journeys for us yeah thank you raj um so um the fast track for azure is a program that's been going on for some time now uh, i wish that actually we could change to my screen um because i do i did put a link up there that allows it to go um, oh there you go we can do that now can you see my screen now assuming you can yes yes, yes i can Perfect. so um as i was saying the fast track for azure is a a program that we we designate that a customer success focused program basically what it does is um, it builds upon years of building our own solutions in Azure, and so therefore proven practices, proven tools um, for 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 us as Azure uh, product group to engage with customers that are trying to build their solutions on top of Azure. Um, and actually, that that so there are a number of uh, three Azure principles. If you go to that that link over there, that on the top of the page you'll be able to get more information about the program itself and how you can get it, get attached to it. Uh, there are some minimum requirements in terms of the customers that can access the program or not. But the point is, um, since we launched this uh, uh, over a year ago, we as in the, 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 the Fast Track team has helped more than a thousand customers either develop or deploy their Azure solutions. Um, and, and you typically do that much faster then when you engage with this team uh, as opposed to doing it on on on, on your own now um we would encourage you to, to i would encourage you to go to this this uh link over there know more about it especially if you are thinking about either a um moving to azure full-fledged or b um developing a new solution in azure and fast track is not only for uh, data as we obviously me and raj we work primarily in data but it it, it can um, it stands to a number of supported solutions they can they they have teams that develop that engage in devops in app modernization in intelligent apps in security in data center migration so there are a number of work streams that you can engage with fast track for azure uh, which are not only data so i just wanted to leave that out there because it's it's it can be an important asset uh, for you to explore, um, especially if you are stepping just now into 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 the Azure world. Uh, I also wanted to uh, leave you with with this. Uh, I did mention this segue earlier in this session. Uh, I would it, it would be very complementary to the one that we are that we presented just now. This modernizing SQL Server the right way. SQL Server here being the moniker for um sql server engine so therefore the one that powers azure sql database and sql server on premises uh the same and then we do discuss there the the uh, migration process especially how to plan uh how to use these tools that we've seen today in different ways 
uh, namely DMA. We've seen here DMA in a different uh, in a different light than, than than we approach in that specific session. So I think it would be a good if you're interested in in actually modernizing your your SQL Server, especially in the scope of end of support, like I started this session today. This uh, may be especially useful for you. Now, these are a number of migration-related uh, resources that I think can be very important uh, if you are if you are thinking about everything we discussed in this session. Um, I would call out a, uh, a couple of things because we do tend to have very long URLs, very very long links in Microsoft. Uh, that would, we we did create these short links for you to use so that they can get easier to remember. Uh, for you to reach uh, very, very specific content. For example, the tools, be that SSMA or Data Experimentation Assistant or, or uh, the Data Migration Service, you have here short URLs to get more information and even download, in some cases, those very tools. Now, the Database Migration Guide is pivotal in all this, um, in all this uh, uh, migration and modernization effort because here, it, this is, the, I, I, I honestly, uh, love this, this data migration guide because you can select where you're coming from, where you want to go in terms of versions and platforms and, and different database vendors. And it will actually create a, a guide that is tailored specifically for your source and destination, guiding you through with and recommendations about which tools you want to use, which methodologies you want to, to implement when you, when you, when what you want to think about when you are migrating. Uh, because one last thing, because we did mention uh, the SQL Server end of support, specifically the extended support, uh, the extended support that we are providing for some customers that want to 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 leverage it. Uh, this is a short URL for an FAQ regarding that. So I'd encourage you to 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 go uh, see that. And at this point, uh, uh, Raj and I will be open for questions. Um, and feel free to please come back with, with uh, any, any questions you may have now, or feel free to ping us offline or on Twitter or email to, to follow up on anything we've discussed today. Thank you so much, Pedro and Raj. That was a great presentation. Uh, everyone, please stay tuned for our next session, Faster SSIS with Andy Leonard. And thank you, everyone, for attending. This is 24 hours of past.